Hello and welcome to another West London Sport QPR podcast. Uh, I'm joined today as ever by former Rangers striker Kevin Gallon and also by lifelong Wickham fan Duncan Alexander, former editor-in-chief of Opt Analyst, now senior editor at The Athletic, as well as being a regular member of the excellent Totally Football Show podcast. Thanks for coming on, Dunk. It's all right. Good to be here. So, um, so after a relatively stable three years of management under Mark Warburton, the Rangers this week named their third manager in eight months when Gareth Ainsworth uh, returned to the club. He served so well as a player following 11 hugely successful years at Adams Park. Uh, last Saturday's 3-1 defeat to inform Middlesbrough saw the board cut tie with Critch- Neil Critchley after just 12 matches and turn our attentions to Gareth. Um, Kevin, obviously you're a long-time teammate of Gareth. What was your reaction to his appointment and um, were you surprised? Um, yes and no. Because it's, it's sort of said, for the last four, you know, um, managerial appointments or when the job was up for grabs, uh, up for grabs for the last, I suppose, five six years, Gareth's name has been in the in the hat. He didn't get it um, for one reason or another. I don't know. You'd have to ask the powers that be at QPR about that. But um, I think. Surprised, not not necessarily this time, because of what sort of happened down at QPR in the last, like you said, eight months. Um, Neil Critchley was, you know, uh, yeah, there's no getting away from it. it was a disastrous uh, appointment, and um, Gareth fits the bill to um, to get the crowd back on side. And you know, I don't know whether it's a case of the boards and the owners and the people above Gareth needed to take the heat off them and um, bring in a fan's favourite to calm the supporters down, which I think it has done. So um, in that way, they've it's the right appointment. But I do think it's, it's a good appointment short term because I think the way it was going for, uh, under Critchley, I couldn't see a win coming. It was... I mean, I know every week we did a prediction and I was trying to do my best um, positivity um, act. But deep down, I was always thinking I can't see a win at the moment. And I do believe we'll get enough wins now, two or three wins to keep us up. I, I think it's a, a short term. It's a good appointment. Yeah, he never really felt like a real keep your manager, Neil Critchley. Nice fellow, but just seemed to lack a bit of charisma. Didn't have any... His demeanour in front of a camera didn't really sort of evoke any sort of kind of, you know, real fan feeling, whereas Gareth's the complete opposite to that. But, Duncan, you, you've seen him at close quarters, um, what he's done at Wickham. We've done an amazing job mm. with resources to him. But I think there is some doubt in QPR's fans about, you know, is, just, is he a long ball manager? Is this what he is? But, I mean, you're there for 11 years. Is perhaps a bit more human than, than what the stereotype is of him. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, if you're a club for 10, 11 years, then you're you're going to have to adapt over time one way or the other anyway. And I think you can kind of split his time at Wickham into a few different stages. He took over when the squad wasn't the best. There was a few kind of troublesome members. He sort of, we almost went down. Um, you know, we, we stayed up on the last day of the season away at Torquay, but thanks to Bristol Rovers imploding at home against Mansfield. And then from then on, it really sort of, just got better and better, took us up obviously into um, into League One uh, and then eventually briefly into the Championship as well. And I think the the championship, championship season was a really key point, I think, for QPR fans because Wickham did go up with their sort of long ball team that people know, you know, back in Fenway up front, that sort of setup. But that obviously didn't work in the Championship. Wickham lost the first seven games, I think. Um, but by the end of the season, pretty much nearly stayed up and he did adapt the, the style of play, he did adapt, adapt the team quite a lot. And and since going back into to League One last season, obviously Wickham got to the playoff final, lost to Sunderland, but we have been playing a lot more progressive. I'm, it's not Pep Guardiola, or, you know, I'm not saying that, but it is a lot more progressive. So I think he's someone that's learned a lot. I think he's become a lot more tactically adept in the last few years. Richard Dobson, his assistant, is really good on, on set pieces and stuff. And as you as you kind of hinted, you know he's he's a great guy. He gets people on the side. The fans will love him. Um, you know, most Wickham fans will say that the the last ten years have been 
other than maybe the Marseille and Nile are the, the best time at the club. And um, I don't think anyone wishes, you know, everyone was sad that he left, but everyone was kind of glad that, that he got the move that he always wanted, really. I think QPR and maybe Blackburn were probably the only two clubs that he'd have, he'd have left Wickham for, and uh, he's, he's got one of them. Yeah, he said this morning in his press conference that he's turned down sort of two or three clubs to stay at Wickham just was his sort of loyalty to them. I mean, is he regarded as, I mean, Martin O'Neill is obviously the, the, the most significant manager, I guess, at Wickham, but would he re- be regarded as a, a better manager than, than O'Neill? Was the... Slightly different areas. I think O'Neill was sort of transformative, whereas I think I think the thing with Ainsworth is he, he has changed over the last, over that 10 years. You know, he, I think he's grown... He said it basically. He became player manager at first, and he he tried to be one of the lads. Still, he, you know, he wasn't. The players weren't calling him Gaffer and all that stuff, and it didn't work at first. The first year or two was, was pretty tough, but once Wickham nearly went down, and I think to be honest, going down that year to the to the National League would have arguably finished the club off. They were in such a bad state, but from then on, he's kind of he built a bit of distance between him and the and the team, and he's such a good man manager, and his scouting's been really good as well. You know, he's, he's He's turned some sort of players that were, you know, sort of seen at clubs that sort sort of being semi on the scrappy, like Sam Vokes at Stoke. Um, he's kind of resurrected their careers, and I think he he's the sort of manager that gets that extra ten percent out of players that maybe haven't been performing. And I think if you look at, at QPR this season, I think that's probably kind of what you need, particularly for the last few months of the season, anyway. And in terms of his man management skills, I mean, is it? I mean. Is that something that what he's doing, does it work at a lower level, perhaps won't work well at a higher level? Or do you think he's above that, maybe? I think, I mean, we've obviously seen recent example, I guess, of like Nathan Jones going from Luton to Southampton, and that really was probably a, a bit of a step up. I, I don't think that's the case here. I think, yeah, maybe five years ago it might have been, but I think he's he's been around the block now, and he's such a kind of unique character. I mean, you just have to... You know, look at the his snakeskin boots and his his long hair, and it it, it it's almost like that stuff almost takes some of the pressure off the players at times. I think in in the situation QPR are in at the moment, I think it'll actually be really useful. I think he will, the fans will obviously generally be you know behind him, um, and I think he'll he'll make a short term impact. But what I really hope is that he gets the time to to really embed himself in the club because I think he's shown at Wickham over the last couple of years that he's really he's really built a system, you know, he's, he's built a system that works, but we've also established a B team, but Anis Mometi, who we just sold for seven figure sum to Bristol City, you know, that was a guy that the club picked up. I think he was playing in like the Essex Senior League. He'd been released by Norwich. Um, and, and that's been the real change the last couple of years is, is the sort of, the the kind of overall, he, he's kind of turned from a sort of good guy running a football club into a proper manager and he's like in charge of every single element of it. And I think, yeah, I think he's got a lot of potential still still to go. Are you surprised that, you know, after the success he had at Wickham, that no one sort of came in for him sooner? Yeah, partly. But I think in some ways the reaction of some QPR fans has kind of proven why that happened. I think, you know, Wickham have been known as a, as a long ball team. Before we played Oxford in the playoff final in 2020, um, Sky put up a graphic showing like, you know, progressive passes and all that, you know, sort of style of play stats. And Oxford were top for everyone and Wickham were like 23rd for everyone. Obviously, Barry had been had gone out of business at only 23 teams. So I think that that was all over social media and that really kind of stuck in people's minds. But that that version of Wickham is, is long gone, really. Um, so I'm, I, he's not going to come in and immediately turn QPR into sort of, you know, Cambridge United from the 1980s or Wimbledon from the 90s. It's it's not going to be like that. I think I think Cooper fans would be pleasantly surprised at the at the kind of technical ability that, that he prizes and the sort of you know set piece um, stuff he, he works on and even the open play stuff as well. Uh, Duncan, just a quick one. You mentioned that, um, that Gareth was a manager and he sort of managed the whole of um, Wickham. But it, I don't think, I don't know what the situation, but the way QPR set up of, we've got a director of football who, who does that. And, and Gareth's uh, title at, the, at QPR is not manager, it's head coach. So yeah. I'm just sort of going back. So you're saying he, he, he turned into a manager of a whole football club where the QPR model is you're in charge of the first team and the first team squad and you have to coach them to win games on a Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's going to be a big, 
a big change. I think as you go up from the Championship, you know, from League One to the Championship and then the Premier League, football clubs will have more structure and more layers. But I think he's adaptable enough to, to work with that. I think, you know, I think he'll see that the, the first team situation at QPR has, has got enough to, you know, to take his attention for the for the first year at least anyway. So um, I think he's in it, it's a slightly tricky situation. You know, I'm not sure he'd have wanted to necessarily go in in, in February. So, you know, with the club obviously on a really bad run of form, but you know, he's been. I think he's he'd admit he's been desperate for the QPR job for for quite a while. And I think you know, it's not like him and Richard Dobson won't have sat round and, and planned what they would do if they got the chance. And I think now they do. And um, I think all Wickham fans would are really interested to see what happens. I think we'll all be looking out for QPR's results almost as much as Wickham's for the next few months. Okay, and, uh, and Doug, just can you tell us a bit more about Richard Dobson? Um, mm. I mean, Gareth name checked him a few times about is 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 he? I mean, I'm not going to say Clough and Taylor, but is it that sort of? Well, they yeah, that's quite like a that? good shout. That's quite a good shout. They are very much a package, and they and uh, Richard Dobson have been at Wickham a bit before Ainsworth, and has had quite a lot of roles. But he's really, again, really developed. I mean, Wickham's last two games, they've scored some some really cleverly worked corner routines, a bit like Brentford are doing in the Premier League. And um, and Dobson, apparently, is the architect of those. He's a, Every player I've seen at Wickham who's like left Wickham or, or moved on, they absolutely love him. He is like almost if you could design the perfect assistant manager, I think he would be it. And there was a rumour on Monday night or, or Sunday night that, that maybe Dobson wasn't going to go and, and maybe it would just be Ainsworth. And I think that that would have been an issue because I think they are such a package together. You know, Ainsworth is very much the sort of the front man, the kind of, you know, the media guy does a lot of good media stuff, takes a lot of that attention. But Dobson is very much the the kind of brains in some ways in terms of the preparing for, for games and stuff. And also a guy called Josh Hart, who is the analyst. And it's kind of, you know, says a lot about modern football that, that they were insistent that they took him as well. He's been sort of transformative in terms of, you know, opposition scouting and, and planning all, and all that sort of stuff. So they very much are a package. And I think the, the fact that Cooper have got all three of them is is positive. OK. So, I mean, Gareth said this morning, Kev, that he, he wants to kind of get players smiling again and enjoying football. You know, you, in your career, you'd have gone through numerous managers. So when a manager sat mid-season, is there a, a standard shtick they, they kind of wheel out when they sit you in the, in the, in the dining room and sort of say, Call me gaffer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, is it is there much yeah. in that? There is, you... it's, there's a lot of like when a new manager comes in and you know it's the first day. There's a bit of apprehension. Everyone wants to impress. Everyone sort of you know thinks there's a clean slate. The players that are not playing, you know, they're thinking this is my chance. The players that are, that have been playing are thinking, well, I have to impress another manager again. So there's a lot of apprehension, a little bit of anxiety to, to to impress the new manager to to get in that first eleven on um, on Saturday. But a lot of managers come in and they, I've heard this one loads of times. You're not fit enough. There's a new regime and it's a lot more harder work, and um, which I always think is a little bit disrespectful to the previous manager because you know I, I don't see how any team in the championship are unfit. Um, some some might have more energy, some might have more legs, as in they might have a youthful, a more youthful team or a different style of football where they're more of a running team. But um, it, Gareth will go in there and try and get his arm around people. Uh, I'm sure he's probably got his arm around Chris Woolock, who was our best player at the start of the season, one of the best players in the championship at the start of the season. And now in the last six weeks, can barely get in the team. So I'm sure if I was Gareth Ainsworth, my, my first my first thing would be get my arm around Chris Willock and get him on side. And you know Neil Warnock, Neil Warnock done that famously when he came to QPR, when he got Tarrapt, who was in and out of the team, and he got his arm around him and he said, "I don't care how you play this Saturday, whatever you do, you're you're starting the next six games," which gave him so much confidence. And then the following season was the best player in the championship. So I'm sure Gareth will be trying to get around the players who've lost lost form, but who can transform the team into a winning team again. And let's be fair, a lot of the players have lost form. I mean, 
not going to go through individually like I just did, but pretty much the whole team has lost a lot, a bit of form and some players more than others. So he needs to get him on side. And look, I know Gareth from when I played and he's a very enthusiastic, nice bloke, good guy, loads of enthusiasm. And, and that's what QPR need at, at this moment because we need a few more wins, a couple more wins because you just don't know what's behind how their form is going to be. So, you know, you'll see a much more positive atmosphere on Saturday against Blackburn on and off the pitch. What do you remember about him coming into the Rangers? Because when he when he arrived, I mean, the team obviously on a down, they lost the playoff final to Cardiff. He came in in that summer. Did, did he kind of lift the mood of the place when he came in straight away? No, well, I wouldn't say he just came in and lift the, he lifted the place because that, that's not necessarily true because we had quite a good change room anyway. Um, but he came in, um, Martin Rowlands came in, and the thing was, Gareth had played in the Premier League and he was sort of a bit of a name and we were in League One at the time. So we all sort of had respect for him and what he did. But then when he came in and we've and, and within a, a few days, we was like, well, he's a good guy. This is a good, a good guy, good laugh, great enthusiasm. Martin Rowlands came in. He was a bit injured, but we all knew he was a good player. So, you know, when, when you go to a, a, a club or which I did a few times, you try and you try, try and make friends and be, you know what I mean, a good bloke. And so you get the, the main, you know, you get your teammates on side. You don't go in there a la Steve Slade and piss everyone off after half an hour and then never, and then it never comes back. So do you know what I mean? So Gareth's a clever guy. He knew what to do, but he's got a very good positivity, great attitude, great laugh, great teammate. And I hope he does really well. Cool. Well, all sounds quite positive. Um, okay, let's look a look. He's got. He said this morning, fate would have it that the team he supported as a boy, Blackburn, faced QBR on Saturday in his first game. Um, they're, they're going quite well, Blackburn. They're up in the top four. They're always a side that never seem to be that impressive, but they never seem. They always seem to be there or thereabouts. But <laughs> um, what are you think of a Saturday, Kev? Um. Well, did I read? I, I don't know if I'm. You probably know more. Have they got a lot of injuries? I think I did read that? that. Yeah. Or was that just paper talk? I think I did read that. I had six players out, but okay. So, but they did win yesterday. Is that right? Or the day before? Yeah, they did. They beat. But you know, I, I understand what you're saying. I, I watched them. Um, I've seen them play really well, and then I'm, I remember when it was the first weekend back, they played Preston. And Preston absolutely battered them. And the only reason I'm saying this is because we were playing Preston the following week and I thought, well, we're in for a tough game here. And that was Critchley's only win. And Preston were poor. But when you say they don't really do much, the main thing in the Championship is consistency. And they seem to be a consistent outf outfit that can pick, that pick up po points consistently. So it's going to be a tough game. Um, the crowd's going to be right on side from the first minute. And if we can get a goal early, I think we'll go on and win. But Blackburn will be coming. And I know this is, if I was a team talker and if I was a player in that Blackburn change room, it would be say, let's just keep QPR quiet for 20, 20, 25, 30 minutes. You know, keep the crowd quiet and then we can do uh, maybe whatever. So QPR need an early goal. The fans will be right on side. I don't know who's fit or, or who's not. But um, I, I fancy QPR to win this one. And I know I keep saying that, but I actually really do this time. I'm being positive again, Ian. Uh, I'm going to go 2-1 QPR. And it should be a good game. Good atmosphere. I'm not there. I wish I was, but I'm not there this weekend. One thing I would say, actually, is that one um, aspect of Wickham under Ainsworth, particularly this season, has been their starts. They've really come out like all guns blazing. Um, some Some big home wins against some of the bigger teams like Bolton and, and Derby at home recently. And it's all down to that first sort of five, 10 minutes of like super high pressing, really, you know, really getting the other team under pressure. So particularly with, you know, all the, all the Ferrari around this weekend, first game. So I imagine that that will definitely be what he's, he tries to get QPR doing. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. 
the QPR will be straight to first 10, 15 minutes on the front foot. And, and, I, and we talk about like Gareth's direct style of play, but I would expect the ball to go in the box a lot more frequent on Saturday, a lot quicker. And I have actually said that in the last last couple of weeks. I mean, we, we did a podcast a couple of weeks ago and I said about the Millwall game, when we started putting the ball in the box in the last 10 minutes, we looked dangerous and we looked like we could get something out of it. So I do think that's a good thing that the ball will be going in the box because if you're a centre forward and the ball's never coming in the box, you're not going to score. You've got, you've got to give the, uh, the, the striker some supply line. So the ball going in the box a lot quicker, a lot more free kit, frequent. And for me, that's a good thing. Thank you, Nick Wickham. What, what sort of players really benefited most from, from Gareth and his sort of players that perhaps were underachieving? I know he's been there a long time, but perhaps hard to say, but, you know, players that were improved <clears throat> under, under him? Yeah, a lot. I mean, a good example actually would be someone like Gareth McCleary, who obviously was at Reading um, and kind of was almost coming to the end of his career. Um, Oxford were, thought about signing him. Wickham ended up doing it. Um, I think that was the season we were in the Championship, actually picked him up. And he's been, you know, he's in his mid-30s now, but he's been absolutely fundamental to how the team play. And I think that's the thing with Gareth, that it, it's not like Wickham don't have skillful attacking players. They really do. But I think he wants that attacking play to take place generally in the final third. And that has been the, the sort of blueprint. Um, as I said earlier, it has got a little bit more progressive this season. Um, we've got Lewis Wing in midfield, who's been very much... a you know, sort of classy sort of championship level midfielder and, and Josh Scoe and who QPR fans might remember. Um he's been pretty good. But but um but yeah I think yeah getting the most out of those attacking players and making sure that they are I think we can do lead, like lead the division in sort of penalty box entries as well to Kev's point there. You know they 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 get it in you know they, they create a lot of attacking opportunities. Um and that is the kind of you know blueprint of what of what Ainsworth wants function his team really. But the the defensive organisation obviously at the other end um, is key as well. Ian, just a quick one. Um, and it's, it's since the appointment of Gareth uh, a few days ago, and uh, and listened to Duncan saying about how he was the manager of the club. It's going to be interesting to see the situation with uh, recruitment. Is this going to be a in the summers, I know I'm going ahead of myself. Is this going to be a, a, a Gareth Ainsworth recruitment summer? Is it going to be a club recruitment summer? It's going to be an interesting time. Yeah, well, I mean, after all of Mick Bill signings, I spent most of the time, more time in the injury room than I have on the on the pitch. You kind of uh, <laughs> maybe, yeah. I mean, to put that to put that into context, like Wickham, obviously in the player final uh, last season against Sunderland. They had prepared like a sort of list of, you know, transfer targets if they'd gone up to the championship and if they hadn't, which I know is pretty standard for teams now, but that's the sort of level of planning and effort they put in. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure that, you know, he will have ideas of players he'd like to bring in um, for, for next season. And I think that would, I think if the QPR fans could see that list, they'd probably be surprised at some of the names. I don't, you know, it's not all six foot eight you know, rugged, hard man, it's going to be a real mixture. And I think, you know, as we said earlier, I think he really is adept at kind of getting that extra 5%, 10% out of players that maybe have been overlooked elsewhere. So I think, you know, obviously QPR have, have got more money in, than Wickham, but, you know, compared to some of the teams in the Championship, I think that will be a will be a help to QPR. So um, mm. I think it's all positive. But I do think, uh, that, uh, Ian Duncan, that QPR do need to get a more... I'm not saying height wise or but a more rugged, more rugged signings because this season we like Ian said, we've had a lot of players brought in and have spent so much time on the treatment table and uh which has been disappointing. So I was I would expect a little bit more looking back at their past um injury records and how many games they play regular in the season. So mm. Yeah, I mean, I suppose there is there is a kind of bit of snootiness about, you know, oh, a long ball. It's like almost like a sin where sometimes, you know, you look at Brentford now in the Premier League, use a long ball to great effect. Um, and I guess, you know, Gareth sort of said this, this morning that, you know, just because you sign Akin Fenwa, you kind of tie with the brush, you, you only play one way. So, mm. I mean, what you do with Akin Fenwa, it obviously worked. You, you, you play to the players at your disposal. So, I mean, hopefully we'll see a kind of, Know what none can say in a kind of um, 
a hybrid almost, you know, as you say. Maybe but, they, sorry, that could go. Yeah, and I was going to say, but that, but Akin Fen was a good one. And for a, a, it was a very transformative signing. I was skeptical when, when Wick signed him. I was like, really? You know, he'd been in the Wimbledon and stuff and not sure he was. But A, what he brought in terms of team spirit and the togetherness. And that's something that Ainsworth, I've never seen a manager build a better dressing room than, than him, even Martin O'Neill. Um, but also, Akin Fenwell was, you know, he assisted as many goals as he scored. He he was, he he was actually a really good good on the ground. You know, he, he played little through balls and stuff. So it wasn't everyone focused on the you know the strongest man in FIFA and all that stuff. But actually, he actually provided a lot of creative attacking play that way as well. I think that's that's the kind of flip side of an Ainsworth team. Really, I think people opposition fans tend to notice the you know the maybe the game management and the aggressiveness of them but if you actually watch them as a supporter you actually see the the creativity that he instilled how did he use Eze when he had him on loan well that's a great example you know Eze came in I couldn't believe that someone that good was playing for us in league two at the time I mean he we he scored twice at Chesterfield he scored the identical goals one with his left foot and one with his right foot I was like it's probably too good for league two but but Angel put him straight in the team and let him do what he does, and and that's, an, that's a great example. You know, it wasn't like you know, what didn't suddenly start using him as a target man or a defensive midfielder. He, he let him play. So th- there's a there's a misconception that it's all sort of you know balls into the channel and, and all that stuff, and it and it really isn't. There's a lot of you know, Wickham fans wouldn't have enjoyed it for ten years if it had all been just you know hoofing out the pitch, and it, it really wasn't. That's great stuff. That's a brilliant insight, Dunk. Thank you so much, mate. And uh, just for the no record, worries. I'm going to follow Kev. I'm going to say Rangers will win 2-0 tomorrow. Uh, sorry, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> Saturday, whatever day it is. <laughs> <laughs> but um, great stuff. Well, thanks a lot, gents. Much appreciated. And um, see you all next week. Like, subscribe, and do all those things we ask you to do. And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye now.